let me welcome you to the 14th lecture of drilling and blasting technology course. Uh, in this lecture, we will discuss the special drilling methods. This is the first lecture on that, there will be another lecture on this topic. Uh, but uh, before that, let us retrospect uh, our previous lectures. Uh, in previous lectures, we have mostly covered the drilling technology practiced in drilling and blasting operation. Uh, we have discussed rotary drilling, we have discussed percussive drilling, we have discussed percussive, percussive rotary drilling, we have also discussed different types of drill bits, uh, we have discussed the influence of the rock and machines on the drilling, these, all these are already discussed. It has been also seen that the mainly mechanized drilling is practiced uh, using either a rotary or a percussive action and various type of drilling patterns used in surface and underground blasting is also covered in our previous lectures. However, there are few special method of drilling in most of these cases in general what we do we carry out large dia drilling. So, those are not very commonly carried out for the drilling and blasting purposes, but those large dia drillings are carried out mainly for the excavation purposes or for creating an opening in the in situ rock mass condition. So, that is basically a special types of drilling technique which is basically practiced. Apart from that there are two other principles which is carried out. One is drilling or you can say uh, cracking carried out by the flame, another is the cracking carried out by the water jet. So, these are two special things we will discuss all these things in our coming two lectures. So, our learning objective is some of the special types of drilling technologies will be covered in lecture number 14 and lecture number 15. So, let us see what are these special methods. So, apart from the standard drilling equipment, there are units and mounting systems on the market for special and very specific applications. And what are this very specific application? These are basically very large diameter drilling. This large diameter drilling means normal cases generally we carried out drilling up to 350 millimeter dia, which we use for carrying out drilling for blasting purposes and some cases little bit more dia may be around 500 mm dia we carry out for some access or ventilation points also. But these very very large diameter drillings are most of the times greater than 1 meter dia which is practiced and this drilling creates basically the openings these openings are used for the human accesses. So, these are carried out for human access and that is why these large diameter drillings are carried out in the in situ condition. So, that this can be used as the access and this large dia drilling may be vertical and if we carry out this vertical drilling of large dia, this may be either for the shaft sinking purpose or for the res driving purpose or if we carry out these are for horizontal, then it may be for it may be considered as the tunnel boring machine where tunnels are constructed or it may be high wall minor auger where the blocked rock mass blocked ore which may be coal also are being extracted by this high wall miner. And these two are one is flame another is water which we have already discussed. So, these are the some special drilling methods can be practiced in different specific conditions. So, let us see the first large dia vertical opening which is created is called shaft sinking. In general, if we are not carrying out mechanized drilling purpose, then shaft sinking is basically carried out in 
manual method where first the drilling holes are made. So, these are the drill holes made using some mechanized or manual drilling machines. So, these holes are created then we blast these holes then we blast these holes and we create the fragmented rock masses at this position. Then this is the grab cactus grab which is basically the loading machine this cactus grab take this fragmented rock material load this fragmented rock material onto the tub or the bucket this is the bucket on this bucket then the bucket is lifted in the upward surface or subsurface where the material has to be dumped and as this much of additional length is additional length is excavated then the supporting of that may be carried out either by bolting and finally, the final support will be made in terms of concreting or shortcreting. So, that is in general idea about the uh, uh, cyclic of uh, using the cyclic operation shaft sinking may be carried out like this. So, when uh, we carried out in this cases we carry out this shaft uh, sinking by drilling blasting and the excavation and loading par, uh, uh, unit operations. But in the modern method we are having mechanized drilling system where shafts are being sunk using the drilling machines or often it may be some cutting machines which excavated in a circular manner using a drilling rig. So, let us observe this video this is a little bit long video and available in YouTube, but I want that you must observe this video completely and then you can easily understand how the shaft sinking may be carried out by drilling operation. Deep shaft constructors often encounter difficult geological conditions such as high groundwater pressure combined with layers of hard and soft material. There is an increased requirement to avoid dewatering during construction of shafts in order to avoid the associated settlements which can affect a wide area. The following animation shows how the Heron Connect VSM shaft sinking equipment can install shafts quickly, safely and economically you can see in difficult ground out conditions and in by inner city areas cutting drum. with limited construction footprint. The initial section is excavated, so one to the two pilot meters opening in depth, is created. and a support concrete ring beam is installed. It acts as a guideway and absorbs the forces from the shaft sinking the process. Drilling rig is, rig is the first segments of the shaft the are assembled and lifted in place. The bottom segment ring has an integrated steel edge okay. which acts Side as a cutting knife maybe during the shaft the sinking. Concrete or maybe Strand the jacks concrete are also. installed on the support concrete. Strand wires are connected to pockets in the cutting edge. The numbers of strands corresponds to the total weight of the shaft. The shaft is now held in position by this compact strand jack system. Preparation for the machine installation starts by using a dummy frame to position the brackets for the machine arms, which are then welded to the steel plates already cast into the concrete segments. These the are the guide machine place. is assembled with the correct arm length to suit the shaft diameter. And this is the drilling Again, rig, lifted into which the shaft is placed by a along the and mounted guide us provided. This is in axial. The rest of the shaft sinking this equipment can now be installed. The three <clears throat> winches are used to lift and lower the machine, i.e., for regular maintenance during shaft sinking, as These well as to lift the shaft. These are basically different supportive uh, elements. The energy and supply lines provide the machine with all necessary power, fluids, and communication. This, this is the an example of a complete pipelines. site setup. 
all operations are powered and controlled from the container this on the surface. This is control room. Stored Let's data, the together with the position of the cutter boom, is shown on a graphic display, giving the operator full control of the excavation and sinking process. The cutter boom can either be controlled manually by the operator or this set in automatic alignments. mode for cutting the set profile in the required section. The shaft is kept full of water during sinking to balance the level of the groundwater table in the surrounding geology. In addition, uh, it the water is itself expected is used as the that uh, generally groundwater may fill the uh, area because the cutting operation is carried out in wet condition. Uh, if not, we can use wa uh, water jet for that, but in general, most of the cases that it, it is below ground, uh, then it is filled with the groundwater itself. This is the, the specifications of this particular uh, uh, soft uh, borer. However, different uh, specifications are, are available across the different manufacturers. Cutting arm moves so the cut the material, to the it is basically the cutting the material and cut, cut material soil, is pumped out on the shaft is able through to a slurry the form. As it sinks into the, ground. the cutting speed and the movement of the boom can be varied to achieve the best excavation so it's rate. a slurry form which is pumped out. When it's necessary to excavate under the cutting edge, such as in hard soil, and the, the rig is being lowered to, lower to the guides. The to extend the you can see the lowering in actual case also. Where this is telescopic. Is encountered, the machine cuts out the rig to the is limit all around the circumference before the shaft is lowered. In rock, this controlled descent allows all of the cutting edge to be cleared before lowering. This avoids trapping the cutter boom or deviations in the shaft vertically. So after creating an opening up to a significant distance, a significant depth, the lowering of the side wall supports has to be carried out. A slurry circuit transports so this the is the pump, from pumping the out of the slurry which on the uh, basically the having the cuts and cut material. The, material to a granular size the cut material is sent the to the settling tank. Pump. In sticky ground conditions, an additional high pressure feed line can be used to clean the cutting drum. And then the separation of water may be recirculated to suit the local soil conditions. As the shaft sinks lower, precast concrete segments with rubber so sealing after gaskets the are significant bolted in depth, place on the top the of the shaft. Heightening of the excavation shaft sinking side walls is carried out either by precast can take place or by the in situ concrete. The molds so for this the is segments are also precast placement as part of the shaft sinking equipment package. Segment dimensions are designed to suit the shaft's purpose. The daily sinking production then is in a is. large range from 1 to 5 meters depending on the diameter, geology and working hours. Forced toward bottom direction hydraulical. As so an alternative to constructing lower. the shaft from it's individual it's segment lower. rings, this in is situ concrete in? can also be used. Formwork designed for the shaft diameter is used to concrete the shaft lining in lifts of about 2 meters in height. The sinking process itself is the same as for shafts constructed with segments. This can be an advantage if the shaft is to be used for launching tunneling machines. The shaft wall can then be prepared with a built-in launch eye to exactly so suit this is the tunneling equipment. Actual uh, photograph. An automatic bentonite lubrication system reduces friction between the shaft exterior and the surrounding to make ground easy during shaft sinking. That lowering action the total generally bentonite is, is designed to spread soil conditions between the uh, when the shaft uh, reaches the final depth casing and the, the uh, machine uh, is removed uh, uh, and the concrete rock. base block is cast and after achieving the desired length uh, drill rig is withdrawn then the bottom is concreted 
and the shaft is completely drained out. The shaft is displaced by grout injected through the bentonite nozzle. The water in the shaft will be Once the completely pumped out, strength, and the water is pumped out. The shaft sinking may be completed. The shaft construction and finally the grouting may be made affecting the ground between the, the surrounding soil. Casing and the, the shaft uh, is now ready drop. to be used. Up to this point in time, Heron Connect VSM So these are the different applications of the shaft if it is bored and using this type of techniques shaft sinking uh, may be carried out very fast only the initial capital cost requirement is uh, significantly high in these cases. So these are different applications. Uh, <coughs> this is shaft sinking. Uh, in most of the European countries and uh, American countries, uh, the uh, best method of shaft sinking is the shaft boring. But often we use similar type of uh, boring for creating the raises also. Before going into this detail, let me first uh, explain you what is raise. Raise is basically an opening where if this is the surface. And there are two different underground levels. Rays is basically the opening which is connecting two underground levels, and this is called rays, which is either vertical or near vertical. So, basically raising is the access way between two levels in the underground and raise boring is a very very popular method because against just like shaft sinking raising raise boring takes a little bit less time if you are compar comparing with the manual method or uh, conventional method where drilling blasting or this type of unit operations are being carried out. So, raise boring is become increasingly popular over the first past 20 years and it is having advantages like personal safety, good working condition, higher productivity, smooth walls that is the uh, damages to the side walls are limited, retaining walls are limited. This also gives better uh, less air friction that is why ventilation may be better, over break does not exist, high advance that is again the high productivity is achieved. So, these are basically n number of advantages you can achieve by raise boring and that is why raise boring is becoming very very popular nowadays. However, there are few uh, disadvantages also say high air in initial investment. Uh, cost may be little bit higher, uh, flexibility is very very limited, you cannot have different diameter, uh, different dimensions if it is carry, carrying out by ray boring only then the circular, it has to be circular in shape, you cannot have another shape then the uh, in house accommodation of the different features in the rays may, may be problematic. So, these are little bit disadvantages are there, but overall the time co time consumption is less and that is why res raising method is becoming nowadays very very popular. Uh, raise boring may be method may be classified in three part one is standard another is reversible third one is blind hole raising. What is standard raise boring? This is the method widely used system and it consists of setting up the equipment in the upper two levels, upper of the two levels to be interconnected or even outside the mine. So, that a pilot hole can be drilled down to a previously opened level afterward the rimmer head is attached to the drilling string and the raise is drilled to the upward direction. So, what is the feature? Equipment is placed in the upper level. So, this is the equipment, this is the lower level from upper level to lower level a pilot hole has to be initially connected. Then 
through the pilot hole a rimmer head is attached so that the rimmer head is pulled in the upward direction so that a rimmed hole or the large dia hole can be created. So, basically first the pilot hole is created then the it is rimmed, but the main machine is placed in the upper level. So, that is the standard raise boring technique. If you look into the next system, so this is the photograph of that one you can see this is the pilot hole which is created machine is in the upper level, this is the lower level and the this is the rimming head and this rimming head is pulled in the upward direction. So, that it rimmed and gradually it drilled like this and finally, you can achieve a raise of this dimension. Uh, in reversible boring system, reversible raise boring system the same operation as are carried out as before only the difference is that the equipment is placed in the lower level inverting the pilot hole and raising execution which are ascending and descending respectively. So, basically if we are reversing this one and place the raise boring machine in the lower level then the method is called reversible raise boring. Blind hole raise boring once the rig has been erected in on the lower level and the drilling is done upward in full section without a pilot hole is called blind raising. So, that means here the upper level is this, lower level is this and you start carrying out drilling from the lower level to upper, upper level with a drilling head like this which drill the material and go towards upward direction. This enable the dislodgement of the material in the bottom by gravity which later on after few sequences which may be cleared by the LHD. So, that is blind hole raising which is a truly large dia drilling, large dia drilling where these are basically rimming operation from a pilot hole which is created in the rays. So, that is why this is little bit this raising method is little bit different blind hole raising method than the uh, standard raising raise boring and the reversible raise uh, uh, boring techniques. So, let us observe one such video where you can see the raise boring is carried out. This is, the this is also available, but uh, One of the most let, powerful uh, I want that you must see it For to have some idea about the raise boring mines, technique. This is shown from the surface for the better understanding. This type of drilling is faster, cheaper, and cleaner than the old style drilling. So, this drill is the blocks. pilot hole. It cuts an 8 meter wide hole, hundreds of meters deep through solid rock big enough to swallow trucks, lots of trucks. They call the 100 a raise bore drill. Here's why. This machine drills up, raising its cutter toward the so surface. So, this is the rimming head. You it's can see this is the rimming head which is basically reamer, rimming the... Driven by hydraulic cylinders that crank out a million kilograms of thrust. The same force blasting from NASA's latest rockets. As mines expand, they need extra. So, I want to show you here that this is the first the pilot hole is created, and then this shaft is fitted through that pilot hole, and the machine drill machine is in the upward portion, and this is the rimming head is fitted with this shaft, and it is allowed to rim in the upward direction. So, if you little bit show. shafts for workers. Let's see how it works. First, the reamer is positioned in the target zone of an existing shaft, ready to be you attached can see, to this the drill is the pipe. Rotation of the, the machine up top 
has to so, punch a pilot hole through almost a kilometer of this is basically to hook up with the, the technique which is carried out that is the pilot hole excavation so i think you can understand here's the what the, how the reservoir is carried out so this is the second vertical excavation large dia uh, boring is carried out for providing a, an excavated opening next we let us look into the horizontal large dia drilling which is basically carried out to create a tunnel and that is why this machine is called tunnel boring machine or in other word TBM. So, basically TBM is nothing but a drill machine, drill machine which carried out drilling of very large dia and often may go up to a 10 meter dia or something like that opening may be created by the TBM. So, large dia drilling may be carried out by TBM which is horizontal or nearly horizontal drilling is carried out here. And you can see the TBM is nothing but a machine which has been developed in recent years that has revolutionized the tunneling industry both making tunneling after economic solution for creating underground space. There are different types of TBM occurs. Uh, most common for the very soft rock condition is earth pressure balance machine otherwise different other machines are av available for weak rock condition or hard rock conditions machines are also available for different TBMs. So, TBM is basically consisting of a shield these are basically large metal cylinders and trailing support mechanism at the front end of the shield there is a cutting wheel which is fitted with the roller cutters and behind the cutting wheel there is a chamber which allow the crossing of the fragmented rocks which are being cut by the cutting wheel. Chamber may be under pressure for the closed faced uh, machine where earth pressure balancing technique is followed or it may be open to the external pressure for the open machines. Behind the chamber there is a set of hydraulic jacks which are providing the support uh, to the finished part of the tunnel and TBM is being advanced against this support by the hydraulic push. So, basically the back part if this is the tunnel and in the mouth this is the cutting head this back part is supported this cutting head is being forced hydraulically from this support to the front direction. So, that is the uh, drag force observed in the TBM. Uh, behind the shield inside the finished part of the tunnel several support mechanism which are part of the TBM are located. Uh, the cutting wheel is typically rotated at a very slow speed. at a very slow speed 1 to 10 rpm uh, depending on the size of the strata cutting of the rock face and the condition of the rock and it also depends on the type of ppm uh, tbm etc and if you look into the machine details you can see this is the cutter head these black parts you can see these black parts these are the rollers cutter rollers uh, then uh, this is the bulk head which is basically providing a closed chamber you can say this is the excavation chamber bulk head and cutting head between this excavation chamber is there. So, whichever material is coming here that is crushed and finally, discharged through this openings created in the bulk head this is the shield up to which this is under support and the machine this is the motive power of the machines which is basically forcing the cutting head through this hydraulic uh, cylinders. So, this is the screw conveyor this which basically take out the material material may be of different there may be a different system in different cases this is the thrust cylinder which is basically giving the thrust and rest these are the gripping shoes and rest part. Uh, is basically you can consider as the finished tunnel these are the settling tank etcetera 
required for the uh, transporting system of the material. So, these are the main excavation part where drilling is carried out by this cutting head, this is the large dia drilling. Uh, in fact, we can see the details of this in the next video and that will clear your idea about this one. In fact, we will uh, uh, we'll finish after observing this video, but before finishing let me show you this video. Uh, you keep a little bit patience in this observing this video. Uh, this is basically animated video, so that you can understand the complete TBM operation. Yeah, uh, how this is carried out. So, you can see this is animated, the cutting head is being shown to you, as the cutting head is rotating, the rest part of the TBM is also shown to you. So, this is the sealed part, after this sealed part you can see, the rest part is the finished tunnel. So, you can see the as the TBM cutter head is rotating, the material is being dislodged. There are two types of TBM being used by Rock Crossrail, is being dislodged earth pressure fragmented. balance TBMs and mix shield TBMs. Six earth pressure balance machines will be used for the 18 so kilometers of tunnel through tunnel. the clay to the west and the riverbed deposits in the east, while two mix shield machines will be used to drive the tunnels through the chalk beneath the river Thames. Depending so on the, the geology head below and the buildings above cut, ground, you can see these are being TBM forced will travel against the uh, sealed. Each week, then the sealed are being advanced. A millimeter of where it needs to be. The first part of the TBM's work is the tunneling phase. The so you can see, as it is TBM rotating, material is being cut. The cut the material is is being crushed in the. Uh, chamber, wheel, you can see the material is crushed in the chamber and finally, coming into a screw conveyor. So, in this case the transportation system, TBM primary transportation system is a screw conveyor which discharging the, the material into a belt conveyor, you can see the material is being transported by a screw conveyor to the belt conveyor. And this belt conveyor is basically placed in the finished tunnel they part and time to time that will be extended. That is telescopic the and that will be extended in time to time. The is then so, you can see as the cut material in a slurry form is being Once transported through the done, belt conveyor. The wheel and screw conveyor are stopped and the ring building so, support starts. system a in this case you can see this is the precast, these precasts are placed in the side walls as a support a system above and they must match rubber packers are provided for sealing them. Into the tunnel on flatbed rail cars. The you can see these are also support are systems are also being placed automatically. Into place using a vacuum. The hydraulic cylinders are temporarily retracted. So, that will be placed automatically and it will be fixed by a bolt or screw. Millimeter precision and held in place by you see these packers are fixing that one. Finally bolted into position. The conical keystone is put in from the front to complete the lining ring. So, the packers is basically Each fixing that one. Tunnel ring is so, built in a slightly using this form. horizontal this means drilling system, be built along the, uh, route by the advance the rate is very, very fast, where in conventional uh, method of excavation, uh, you can achieve around 30 to 40 meter uh, per month progress, work, you can achieve 100 meter uh, progress per month in, in case of using this large dia uh, tunnel boring machine. However, the problem associated with this large dia tunnel boring machine is that first the capital Once requirement is very very is high say so, a TBM may cost you around five, uh, 50 crore 100 crore something like that. So, the, the capital cost requirement TBMs is very high in a different and the next is that TBM the TBM installation in time in the underground is ten. very very high. So, first a pilot Mixed tunnel has to be created which may be which of uh, 70 meter 80 meter long for installing the TBM inside is that then only TBM start material. working. So, TBM can be adopted only for those cases where a long tunnel has to be from the constructed. So, in this the case you can see the transportation system is a slurry transportation system where material is cut material is being pumped out 
not through the connected in the screw conveyor system. So, basically there are n number of varieties I request you, you can see this large dia horizontal drilling n number of animated videos are available in YouTube, you can observe them then it will be very easy for you to understand those things. Changes in the soil can be handled by adjusting the pressurization. It is through the suction line to the separation plane at the surface. Here the soil is separated out and removed from the bentonite suspension through a centrifuge and the clean suspension is transferred back into the slurry circuit. As tunneling advances, the flexible extension lines are installed to extend the lines after each thrust phase. So, this is the push rail, how the pusher is TBM pushing the TBM in the front direction so that from Royal Oak to Farringdon. A second pair of TBMs, Elizabeth and Victoria, uh, will construct drive it is Y. Moving in the front direction. There is another little bit difficulties in TBM. The TBM, if TBM is being used as the construction of the tunnel, sharp bend cannot be possible, cannot be carried out in the designing. It is very, very difficult to achieve it by TBM because TBM is having a longer length, it cannot sustain a sudden bend. So, let us uh, stop in this class at this position, we will continue the same topic in the next class also with some other horizontal drilling and the uh, frame cutting and water jet cutting. Thank you.